Hiya and welcome to the Open Mic Anything Goes chat with myself and Pippa Campbell. We're going to be talking about loose skin, insulin resistance, skincare, hormones, bloating, the whole shebang. So enjoy the next hour. It's all about you. Right. Okay, okay. guys. Let's get into this. This is like an open mic. This is like... You, yes, I know you're a sun worshipper. I just need to introduce you to this guy. He's the certified health nut, right? And he is a massive advocate of butthole sunbathing. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, and you want to see how his shape how is work? in the best shape. Have a look at Troy Casey, the certified health nut. He's got this book out mm. and it's ripped at 50. You want to see the condition of this guy. He must be about 4% body fat. He is lean AF. Uh, I just, I, I'm kind of getting images in my head at the moment and we need to move on because I've got these images of this guy and what he's doing. So, oh yeah, your images are right. I want you to check him out. He's fantastic. I love him, love him. Okay, right. Enough about buttholes in LA. Let's move on to thyroids here in the UK. Okay, what, is the what are the best checks to, uh, to go for for your thyroid? If you've got any indication that you might have a slow thyroid or an overactive thyroid, what tests are we looking at here? Okay, well, you can go to your doctor and get blood tests, okay? Now, the problem... I find is that GPs often only test for TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And if that comes back within range, and sometimes they don't do further testing. Now, sometimes they might do more, but I'm just saying sometimes. Now, thyroid stimulating hormone works with T4, free thyroxine. So it's like a stepper, one goes up, the other one goes down. So really you want to see both of those together. So just really, really ask your doctor to see both. Um, if not, then yes, it might be down to private blood tests. Very rarely can you get on the NHS um, T T3, which is the active hormone that T4 converts to. So we do need to see all these things um, because it might be that someone's taking thyroid from there is a question further on, um, and they think it's not working. So why? Maybe it's because that um, the problem actually lies in perhaps you're not activating your thyroid, you're not turning it from T4 to T3, so it's more of a T4, T3 problem. Um, it might be that it's also not getting into the cells. So we need blood tests, and that's, and in terms of getting into your cells in the activation, I think um, DNA testing is really good. Okay, yeah. just to touch quickly on range. Okay, so yeah. in the UK, we have a certain average range. In Europe, they have a different average range. Yes. In the United States, they have a different average range yes. where would you take your normal range from i mean because obviously in the uk because it costs us a fortune we don't want people to be ill so we've got a very wide parameter uh, for what's normal whereas in the usa because it's insurance based like it's very small parameters for what's normal and all of a sudden you're medicating and private people. blood tests so i work with a lab in the wimpole street in london called tdl so the blood test that i see when i do private blood tests the, the range is much narrower so your doctor might say that oh yeah you're fine you're within range but actually when you get them privately then you're not um and also it's going with symptoms as well i, I loaded up especially because people have been asking me a lot, I loaded onto my website this morning um, a thyroid symptom checker. This is the functional medicine right. uh, from the, the Institute of Functional Medicine. It's their symptom thyroid checker. So, you know, it's good to check everything as well. You know, check the symptoms. Sometimes blood tests, you know, occasionally don't show the whole picture. So it'd be good to see, you know, how many of those you can tick off. So you can download that from my website. Brilliant. So they can just go to your website after this chat or yes. now if you're bored of us and just basically do it. <laughs> right. Okay. Next question. Right. Okay. Uh, just because uh, I fancy this one, where sh when should I take my supplements and collagen and should I spread it out throughout the morning or throughout the whole day? So can you explain, particularly with, because I know it's so tempting to just take supplements whenever you want, but 
you need a lot of them are very fat soluble aren't they they need to be taken yeah. with food can you explain that because obviously people go to holland and barrett i mean it's, it's all very nice packaging or even planet organic or even the swanky swanky ones but you just if you take it at the wrong time it's not going to benefit you is it can you just give us a brief, brief outline of the morning and the evening ones yeah well there are some you're right the fat soluble vitamins that are better with food generally on the whole i recommend people take their supplements with food so either immediately after eating or if you have trouble swallowing something then take it in the middle of your meal so then the food will push it down okay the only time right, i recommend right. supplements before a meal might be something like a digestive enzyme because that digestive enzyme has to help break down the food you're about to eat um some things need to be taken on an empty stomach and that might be something like uh, an amino acid. L-theanine is often better on an empty stomach. Um, what else? We've got um, sometimes NAC if you want it to work on the brain. So some things um, might be better on an empty stomach. Um, then, then dosaging throughout the day. So that does really vary. So thyroid supplements tends to be better breakfast and lunch tends to work better earlier on in the day, but often away from your thyroid supplements. Um, I mean, medication. And then liver ones, because the liver tends to work better later on in the day, tend to work, take those later. B vitamins, be careful of taking them close to bed if they're like stimulatory ones, like B12, um, because right. then you might not be able to sleep. Um, B12, I think. Or if you do, it might be a bit of an interrupted sleep. Yeah. You won't get so B12, I think. And that's, some, that's often better. Um, you know, the ones that go under the tongue and that's better between meals as well. So I take my methylated B12 when I first get up in the morning. I need that oomph in the morning. So, yeah. Oh, just, just moving on from there, actually, just while we're on methylation. Yes. There's a lady who said her DNA shows that her methylation is slow. Can you recommend a good folate supplement? Can you just briefly explain what, uh, briefly, about the methylation uh, okay. system and also what is the difference between folic acid and folate? Yeah. Okay, so methylation, just to do a quick snapshot, it's involved in every bodily process, happens at cellular level and it's happening all the time, okay? So it's a really important process that's needed for everything. You know, for a brain function, for detoxification, um, for fertility, the immune system, Okay, just think it, it's needed for everything. So we want to work, we want it to be tickety-boo working. Um, but we have different cycles in the methylation cycle and the, um, the folate cycle is actually the first one. This is where it starts. We need to get it right from the beginning. So it depends when you say sort of you need folate support. Um, it's not just about MTHFR. Um, it's about looking at the whole pathway down. So is it just at the bottom that you have that problem? Now, if you do have a SNP there, um, do some, still need to be careful, just don't wade in always with methylated folate because you need to see your feedback loop as well. Like you, Davinia, um, I think your feedback loop was looking maybe slightly sluggish. So we said lots of green leafy vegetables and, and things like that were, were the way forward for you. So you've got folic acid um, and folate. Folate is from diet, folic acid is the synthetic form. And when you're taking a supplement, don't take the folic acid. You want the folate. Okay, so what really surprised me is, oh, a SNP. Can you just quickly explain what a SNP is? It's, it's like a variation. So you've got a gene that might be, a, you know, a good gene. It's like, whoa, this is great. This is a good one. But when it's, there's something slightly negative going on it or something that there's a variation from um, what we should be having, perhaps, then that's a SNP. Now, we don't, don't be scared because we've all got SNPs. We've got lots of SNPs and variations. Um, it just means that there's a change in that gene. It just makes you you. And you can, the great thing about knowing your SNPs is you can supplement specifically for you to get those genes working well. So what used to be your genes were your destiny now aren't. Now you can supplement and you can do things to navigate your genes. That's why it's so important to know your genetic code yes. and what SNPs you've got that are slightly irregular, which we all have. Yes. So you can eat according to what your genes need. Um, okay, so when you're pregnant, obviously I've been pregnant loads, you were pregnant, and straight away they're like, give, the, give, give everyone folic acid. What's your thinking about that nowadays? Well, I would be going in with, um, with folate. So yes, of course, you need to eat all your green leafy vegetables, but absolutely important when you're pregnant to be taking a very good 
pregnancy multi that has folate in. So that's not bit, folic acid. No, because, because if you can't got... absorb it. It's synthetic. Yeah. You can't absorb it very well. So just forget it. So you just need to, you know, it is worth investing in a good quality um, pregnancy multi. Yeah. I mean, it's only for a few months. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, exactly. exactly. It's not because if you're breastfeeding as well, it carries on. And I think well, it's, in, the the, in the great scheme yeah. of things and yeah. the guilt that's involved after, it's you yeah. know. I okay, think Zeta and West again, is the queen of pregnancy. Zeta West. Say that again. Zeta West is like is the Zeta, Zeta West. Okay, I'll link to her. Okay, uh, underactive thyroid on two hundred milligrams uh, milligrams of thyroxine, and she can't lose weight. Help. Okay, yeah, this is going back to what I was talking about before. So you're already on, on a pretty high dosage. Um, so I imagine your, your doctor has sort of slowly been putting you up and up and up and up and you're still not sort of losing weight. So just saying your diet is already good and you're not starving yourself and you're eating enough protein, then I would be looking at possibly a DNA test because is it actually your conversion of T4 to T3, which is those are your fat burning hormones. So I would be looking there, and they do require to activate them, vitamin D, vitamin A, um, or is it even getting into your cells? So cell membranes support is really important. That's like with your omega-3s and with phosphatidylcholine. So we want a nice sticky cell membrane so um, things can get in and out, okay? Okay, just quickly remind us of what phosphatidylcholine do you recommend? what brands because there's so many about and they really vary in price yeah i don't know about retail brands i only know the brand that um that i use and i've recommended to Vinia, which is the energy research phosphatidylcholine um and um that you know that's really and um, biotics do one as well actually so i only know those two brands because those are the ones i recommend but i'm sure there are some good retail brands as well and the, just to remind people, it's Lifeco GX is the um, DNA test that you yes. recommend as well, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the one I've done. I have spent so much money, I can't explain, on DNA tests from 23andMe to um, uh, which fit one and just, just thousands of them. And this is the one that I found yeah. most actionable as a woman, to be perfectly honest, because I don't really care about if my urine smells of what is it like asparagus well that's one of them you yeah. know on 23 me i don't care it's like i'm well, so to what? Have it's smelly it's urine. i want to know what my estrogen's doing yeah, yeah. Why I'm a come on tell me about estrogen and yeah. also what how does that matter what's it mean yes so um life code gx and they send around the world it's a simple cheat swab i mean it literally it's like a cotton wool bud and you just press it quite yeah. firmly around your cheek ah, 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 yeah and, um, and send it back. So you do that for a minute, you just pop it back with a stabilizing capsule and um, you can send that, they can send it to anyone in the world um, and then send it back. So it uh, doesn't matter where you yeah. live, easy test. One of the easiest tests to do in lockdown, really. Yeah, for sure. Okay, now then, these people approach me all the time, but I tell them to sod off. Herbal life made me bloat. Should I try keto or paleo? Yeah, okay, well, Again, with, um, with a lot of companies, it's looking at the ingredients. And um, I find there are sometimes some, if you can't understand the ingredients, if you can't, if you can't pronounce them, then there's, there's something not right there. Um, it's not the first time I've heard that. So what else could you try? You could try keto, you could try paleo. I know there are so many things. What I would say, don't try anything fatty. Whatever you do, it's got to be sustainable, okay? Because if you embark on something that's only a month or only six weeks, then what are you going to do after? So you've got to think about where are you going to be in a year? You want to be eating real, normal food. And, you know, what I find about um, the sort of like meal replacement things is you will lose weight. You'll probably get flabby as opposed to i'm obsessed with lean hard like muscle i, I don't so when i run i don't want to jiggle and yeah. if i said I did something like herbal life i would do because i'm all about building muscle so i don't have to really diet because my body's constantly metabolizing you know i want good bone density i want good muscle mass and i want lean uh, as much lean tissue as possible and i can only do that by cutting out inflammatory ingredients. So for me, my go-to would be 
paleo, but I still have butter. Mm. And now and again, I, I, and I still have sourdough. You can't go wrong with, you can't go wrong with paleo. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. You're, you're trying to lose weight. You still don't want to be eating tons of dates and, and nuts are good for you, but only eating sort of millions of them. So of course there's going to be portion control. And I'm not saying calories. Um, I'm talking about portion control. But I mean, Absolutely. I think it's kind of like easy, does it? And as, do you know what? As soon as you start cutting out those refined sugars and you start cutting out those god awful vegetables, seed oils, the sunflower oil, the veg oil, I'm realizing that restaurants cooking it and takeaways cooking it and it's in every single like granola bar and everything. As soon as you start taking those out, you'll see a massive shift in your weight. All of a sudden your body can start detoxing properly because it's not got this machine oil to, to have to try and get through the liver and everything. Because while your body has got um, carbs and sugars and everything that of course are kind of food substances, well sugars are ish, they're more of a stimulant than a food. But while your body has got like that to get rid of, like, i.e. to lose weight, immediately it's got this major emergency, this alien oil in there. That, that, that's the priority. It's like, mm. get rid of this stuff before it's even going to consider you yeah. being overweight because it's got machine oil in there because that's what margarine was made for, to clean machinery. Yeah. So, I mean, it's an order of priority of getting that crap out of your diet. And the trouble is we've had so much like propaganda from the 80s that this was really good for your health. You know, this like uh, vitalize, this margarine. Oh, well, that's, you know, and we, the, we know in the 70s all proved wrong, all, all of that sort of rubbish. But, you know, and I think the thing is, if you're doing keto, is to do it um, healthy keto. Um, I've got a term for... Um, I've uh, got a term for people who don't do keto or keto sort of like with healthy oils and I call it dirty keto. <laughs> so um, it is dirty keto, yeah, yeah, dirty yeah. keto. So we're talking like burgers, cheese, because sometimes, and I'm not saying any of you do this, but sometimes people start keto, but then they start having, you know, like burgers and then they put sort of cheddar cheese on that and they're, they're having tons of dairy. And don't get me onto the whole links of dairy and hormones. That's like, <laughs> I'll go off on one. But anyway, you, you just you want to be eating sort of like the good olive oils, yeah. avocado oil, um, coconut oil, things like that. So, um, but just not piling on all of this sort of um, cheeses and, and things like that. So you definitely want to be doing sort of healthy keto. Um, and then that makes it, you know, longer term, of course. But I mean, but Pippa, you can't, what, what I'm saying is if, because when I first sort of started losing weight, I didn't know about how much better organic was, how much faster I would have lost weight having healthy organic fats. I didn't know that. And I've, obviously I still clung to my old sort of Domino's, McDonald's lifestyle because it's a security blanket. We've, we've all been raised on it. But I mean, it is possible to lose weight on a dirty keto. It's just like taking those steps. And the more you discover and the more you sort of like take certain things out and knows what to look out for, that the more it's ingrained in your brain that this will work faster and faster, the more I get rid of the crap. Like you said, the cheese. Now I only have cheese that is raw. So I look out for raw cheese because I'm after the good bacteria in it just to help my, uh, my gut repopulate. So I'm using foods as tools for my mental health, for my gut health, for my physical health. And it slowly, slowly, you know, it slowly, slowly changes. Well, so if someone is going keto and they want to have a shitload of bacon, a shitload of avocado and a load of cheese on top of a salad and maybe even a steak under it, I say happy days. You just get in there. You can't suddenly fast track to this keto ninja because you've got all these like 30 years of old habits and thinking yeah. of this. Yeah, you don't have to do it straight away if it's too much. Um, and I think, you know, I think the thing is, is that, as I said, yeah, you just got to think sort of longer term and don't worry if you don't, some people do lose a lot of weight initially, but you know, I have clients who, you know, they, they, they might not lose much weight in the early days. So this occasionally can happen. So if you, if you're suffering with high inflammation, your body's going to prioritize you reducing it's inflammation swollen. first, and then yeah. it's going to say, Oh, now I can lose weight. So I mean, I had a client once. And um, it took, it was, you know, it was frustrating, it's very rare, but um, 
she didn't want to take any supplements, which could have pushed things along a little bit quicker. So yeah. just with just with food. And it took her a month to start losing weight. And my goodness, when she did, that was it. She was, you know, losing weight. But there are a lot of under, there was a lot of underlying inflammation that we had to deal with first. You know, whilst that's unusual, I'm just saying sort of just be patient when you're trying to lose weight. Yeah, be patient. You know and what, and as, as, as you start as you start getting a bit of mental clarity, because that will probably come before the, the size eight body, the mental clarity will come. And to be honest, that's what keeps me on track. I mean, fair enough, I, I like to be lean, I like to be able to run, but there is nothing worse than having that post gluten sugar te come down and being on that picky, 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 out of control eating sort of like, treadmill really it's like going to nowhere and and it's just it's i just like being able to feel like i'm using food as a fuel it's not using me i'm not being used by the big food corporation to yeah. give them whatever they want to give their dividends to their yeah. shareholders and which we all we, yeah. we all you are doing to, you need to see food i mean i truly believe food is medicine i absolutely do and i think once you start thinking of it as um, getting all the sort of nutrients into your body then you'll stop Yes, you'll be pleased when the weight's sort of coming off, but also, but what you'll be really pleased about is, you know, how sharp you feel, how, you, you know, you don't feel as tired yeah. anymore. So all those benefits, yeah. you know, and people forget that very easily. So I always make sure I write all these things down when clients are saying, you know, they say, oh, I only lost, you know, a pound this week. And then, you know, I'm listing all the things, but you're sleeping well, you feel better, your periods are, are, are regular and not as heavy. So all these things, you've got to think about all the benefits as well. Yeah. I'm all about losing like visceral fat. Surely that's what we're after is visceral fat. When what you could be seeing on the scales could be water. If you want to lose tons of weight, just like drink a load of horsetail tea, that's going to get you, you know, that's really good for getting rid of water retention. I swear by that. I was really sort of, I was watery. When I was eating inflammatory foods, I was very watery as well, you know, ankles, knees. Um, yeah, yeah, everywhere. I, I felt like, well, I was a bruise, really. Just yeah. a great big bruise. Right. Okay. Um, oh, ooh, this is, she's just turned 40 and she suggested to her doctor that she's got a hormone imbalance. She's got moods and heavy periods, etc. He suggested she goes straight on the coil. Is this the right thing to do at this stage and age without prior testing? What's your thoughts about that? Right, well, obviously, I'm not a doctor, so I can't um, recommend whether somebody should or shouldn't go on the Marana coil. Um, I'm just going to sort of say what I would do. Um, I mean, it's different because I suppose I know all my genetic testing that I absolutely would not be able to, you know, take the Marana coil because of my hormones. Now, Marana coil is going to give you progesterone. What would so happen to you if you did? What would happen to you if you did? Uh, well, it would just, I mean, to be honest, it's not going to cause, a, it's not going to solve my estrogen detox problem because it's only progesterone. So, I mean, possibly, I don't know whether I, I don't feel anxious anyway, but you know, maybe it would you know, help on that front a little bit. I don't have heavy periods. So um, yes, it can help definitely with that, but there are other ways. So are the heavy periods to do more to do with the fact that you can't detoxify estrogen? And if they are, which commonly they are, then if you deal with that, then you, know, you don't have to put hormones into your body. So, yes, you can take the call, absolutely. But, you know, of course, um, I'm going to go down more of the natural route, and that would not be my first point of call. But I know that a lot of doctors would say, you know, be going, putting people on the pill, um, would be, you know, going in the Morena coil. And obviously, any kind of um, ex exogenous hormones that we put into our body, there is still that, you know, cancer risk as well. You know, if you can't detoxify them, these things very well, there is still... There is just still generally, you know, a risk when we're putting these things into our body. So, no, I'm not a huge fan of the pill. I'm not a huge fan of the Morena coil. Um, I would always go natural route, first of all, with hormones, um, you know, like a hormone, hormonal glandulars and things like that, helping to detoxify estrogen. Then if somebody did need the next stage, then I do work with um, a doctor who does bioidentical hormone replacement if I feel then they need something else. Um, right, so there's a couple of considerations before yeah. you shove that in. Yeah, because... And I mean, do you know what? No one, I mean, the, th the thing is, what we've got to remember is, as women, we're quite complicated creatures. We have different cycles to men. We, they really can't study us because we're all so different. We've all got different sort of 
perimenopause, menopause, PMT, uh, everything. That, and it is a, a known fact in the medical profession. They say women are too complicated to study. A decent cohort of women is too complicated. So they look, they look at men aged between 35 and 55. And that's where you get your averages from. So no one is going to look after you like you are. And this is where, you know, God bless the NHS and everything, but sometimes we've got to put our hands in our pocket and just invest mm. in knowing ourselves just to make our families life. I mean, you know, it's really life tough. Because it's yeah. too expensive for the NHS to start looking into because we're so variable and there's too many variables. Yeah. And that's why I think these DNA tests that are now, they used to be like a million pounds to do a DNA test. And that was like 20 odd years ago. So it's really come down in price. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, we're, and I mean, we're it's pretty really lucky that tough. we even access this information. Yeah. She, she's just turned 40, this, um, this person, you know, and it is tough in the 40s. It's just, it's unfair, you know. It, we are getting, getting into the, the 40s, perimenopause, things are all over the place, and it does become more complicated. I can't just say to you straight away, oh my goodness, it's this. But I would certainly be looking at your estrogen detox pathways in a DNA testing, um, because you kind of already said it yourself. So hormonal imbalance, moods, heavy periods. Generally, generally heavy periods. Now it could be other things, but quite often it is an estrogen detox problem. So that's why I'd be looking at your different sort of pathways for detoxification. But you know, there are so many different root causes and we are really com com complex creatures, especially at this age. I know. I mean, someone here has actually written, she's got very heavy periods and worse now, she's in her 40s. And she might now be, uh, might she now be iron deficient? She's yep. so tired. What yes. about iron? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you de I definitely want to be looking at estrogen detox pathways because yes, you could be take you then take an iron supplement. And I think um, the, uh, oh, it's gone out of my head now. Just the one from the pharmacy is very good. Um, I'll come back to it. I just got yeah, it in my head now. Remember. But there is a very good answer. I mean, what, 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 what foods can we take oh, to sparkling, increase sparkling. iron absorption? So I because think that, I think really you've got to sort the heavy periods out first. It's getting to the root. So if you keep putting in, yes, if you're eating red meat and you put it, you take an iron supplement, but you're not getting to the root cause. I think that what we need to do is try and help you lighten those periods. And I think that's estrogen detox. Okay, and what what estrogen detox would be? So, like dim? we've always talked about our favourite supplements, things like so. Dim would be if there's a phase one issue, which is yeah. Davinia's favourite. You love that. She'd have everyone on it, you know. She'd have the whole world. <laughs> gone dim. Um, the world's gone dim in this lockdown. We were like, ah. I took so much it actually showed up in a test, didn't it? <laughs> you went to bring right, your house. Right, well, you said you said two, so I took four, obviously. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with, guys. Do you feel for me? So she ends up. <laughs> My name's Davinia so and I'm an addict. Dim. I know that. <laughs> Taking so much Dim that she was pushing down the, the good pathway, but then too much. And I was like, whoa, in the Dutch test, I've never seen anyone with such a high 208 pathway. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so I would oh, be looking at uh, in a in a complicated DNA test, creature. We can see, yeah, in a DNA test, we can see phase one pathway. If you need support there, that's dim. Or do you need phase two pathway? And that could be quite a few different things depending on where your SNPs are. You know, as I talked about those variations, it might be some your glucuronidation pathway. It might be uh, you need sulfur sulforaphane. It might be that you need um, glutathione. So there, there are various things. And also looking at your comp, which again, you, you love talking about comp, don't you? Um, so I think um, it is yeah. a bit more complicated, but once we've got a test, then it's not. It's not complicated. And you've got, oh, you've got a route really to, I mean, how much are these tests? Because this, they've got, um, they're going to try and start doing us some regular offers, aren't they, these, 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 uh, this company? Well, yeah, they because we talk about it so much. I know. They just finished the female one, so um, you know if anyone missed out on that, you know, sorry, but we, they ran it for quite a long time. The lab in a couple of weeks' time, they're doing Davinia a new offer. Um, it will be one that will be open to men and women, um, and oh, great. so then you know Davinia will. I'll be telling Davinia about that, and she'll tell you all about it. But I think it's going to be the beginning of May. So if you want to do the new one coming out, which I don't know the exact test yet. 
but you can always do estrogen as an add-on. If you need to do estrogen, you can okay. do an add-on. They've got loads of tests. So if you've done your testing already, um, they, do, they do nine reports. So if you've done your testing already and want to go back, so if you've done the female offer already, um, I think they did send you an email to say that you can get 10% off if you use the code female add on 10. And then you can get other reports that you, you know, you want. So detox, right, so the, 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 the company is called Life Code GX. Yeah. Have a Google, have a look, see what you fancy. Yeah. And do you know what? It's the best Christmas present ever. And like we said, they're gonna they're gonna open it up to men too because you know I think it's super important. I definitely want to get Matthew on one because he's he's you know that they struggle as well. Yeah. And do you know what? He doesn't take any supplements whatsoever, which brings me on to another question: What supplements are good for men? Matthew's in yeah. his forties now, and do you know what? I think we do neglect them a little bit compared yeah. to how we chat. <laughs> Because it's all yes. about her. Uh, forget them. Um, yeah. Forget them. Forget them. Just deal with that. Um, so what, um, what, what, what do you generally look at, middle-aged men? What should we be shoving down their necks? Um, and do they need right. as many well, tests as we do? I Are they not as important? Like, I'll tell you what makes me laugh. The way we're all putting men into this box. Like, men, they take this supplement. <laughs> it's like, they are men. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> But you yeah. know what? Yeah, They're complex, complex creatures too, but not as complicated as us because they don't have estrogen receptors all over their body like we do. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, we can't say, I can't say specifically ones for men, but I mean, obviously the time in their life, I'd be looking at stress. So that's where, you know, perhaps looking at methylation would be very interested. So stress, but also insulin, you know, men are overweight and then they have this tummy fat and visceral fat. So I think I'd be looking at insulin resistance. So it's not just women that become insulin resistant, uh, men as well. And you can quite often see a man that isn't actually, they don't look overweight, but they have this tummy. Yes. Yeah, it looks like a beer yeah. belly. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so I'd be looking, obviously it depends what their issue is. You know, men say, oh yeah, 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 I'm fine. I mean, for me, sometimes for my male clients, it's like getting blood. Yeah, and I said, well, I look at them and I go, uh, you're not. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, fine. quite often you the used wives, to be. you're not. Yeah, so the wives might come in on the, so I might be talking to, you know, talking to men, and I'm, so the first half an hour, you know, especially if it's like an online consultation, the first half an hour I've been talking to the men, and I'm really trying to get some information, and it, we're sort of getting there, it's quite hard, and then the woman comes in and goes, what do you mean he doesn't have any gut symptoms? You know, he's fasting every night. And, you know, it's like, well, he, didn't, yeah. he didn't mention that. You know, so they, do, they don't tell me things. So it's not always easy to get to really find out what's going on. Um, so it's like, what is their issue? Are they drinking too much alcohol? Are they, you know, yeah. what is it? Yeah. You know, because they don't, they don't tend to seek help enough. I mean, some uh, uh, just speaking about, wine and alcohol yes. as if someone who says she reaches for wine to calm herself and wind down what can i do instead yeah i mean that's you must see that a lot in your, I see I mean, it like a see, lot. when people are not i'm i'm alcoholic i know that that's 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 in my dna and that's what i can't touch so i have through my survival instincts have found other ways to unwind but for people who can drink and have that one sip of wine, it must be so tempting. Yeah, Because it is, it is think... instantaneous, isn't it? Yeah. And the thing is, is that it's not just about, you might get people that Monday to Friday working, not really sort of thinking about alcohol, and then they binge drink, so you've got that. But then there's actually, in a way, it's sort of the people that don't know is these sort of um, people who, are, I get a lot of women who are saying they're having one or two glasses, or they're having a couple of glasses every night. So actually, that, so that, that's that big, not, not a glass, yeah. but a glass. But that is every night. So we need to break that habit. Now, often people who do have an issue with alcohol, sometimes I do, I often see a snip on their GABA, um, so their neurotransmitter, which is your calming neurotransmitter. And quite often I see a snip on that gene. So what people are doing, they're using alcohol to relax. And I think the only way is you know, to absolutely crack this habit. So it might be the time you normally have that glass of wine you call your friend. It might be that you just literally have to get it out of the house. Then you can use things like L-theanine, uh, lemon balm. You go and have a bath at that time. 
It is absolutely so. You know, a time when you've got to just. I mean, so, I need to be a glass. Because of wine I mean, up. I mean, what what I'm what I'm seeing here. I reach for wine to calm myself and wind down. Yeah. Now, I used to reach for wine for to wind myself up to get active to have fun. So, this is a different sort of yeah. self uh, self medication here. So to calm down, there are so many different ways to do that. If you're not re reaching for wine the way I did to give myself self-esteem, give myself conversation, give myself energy, this is, there's so many options. I mean, I would definitely invest in a spike mat. Mm -hmm. I'd go lie on that. When you reach for wine o'clock, you lie on that. And you also have a cold shower. You have a glass of kombucha as well, because that's yeah. that is an that's the drinking process. Replace if it you're with really something. wired. Have, now tell me about GABA because I can get it here in any pharmacy. I know. I just actually bought a load because hey, I was there today. Know, and when I'm in a pharmacy, I've got to buy pills, right? You know. But okay, so hey, congratulations, sixteen months sober. Well done. So I get this so, from yeah, so you've got You get it. You can get it from America online, um, and. This is actually GABA and L-theanine together. Okay, but, yeah, so, so right, so let, let, me just, let me just explain this, this GABA, because if this person is just drinking to calm down, we can deal with that. If you're drinking like I was, that's a whole different sort of chat, and that's going to take more than an hour. That's more of an but, addiction. Because <laughs> I did drink. Okay, so if um, they oh, just going back to that of, wine thing... Somebody I saw wrote that it's like when they're cooking. Now, that's a really common time when people will grab the wine because they're cooking. So that's when yeah, you Yeah, because I, but I used to say it was for the gravy. The yeah. gravy could never happen. Yeah, of course <laughs> she did. Drink a box of wine of for course the gravy. She did. Of course she did. Bladdered. I was like <laughs> the chef out Sesame Street. <laughs> uh. So I think okay. you absolutely need to replace it with something else because if you're cooking you, you won't be able to go and do something else at the same time you know um so yeah, she like should take some healthy this is this is even pre-cooking because that's a trigger so it's like l-theanine or calm her down after work or whatever's going yeah. on some um gaba now yeah. when i take a lot of gaba i get a bit breathless and it's like a bit fuzzy well how much are you taking well, I just took loads, just to see what happened. <laughs> oh, you see, this so, is a game. Oh, my God. Listen, honestly, if you tell me to take one, I'll take 21. Yeah. I'm going to start putting labels on over your supplements and changing the you dose. Have. You have one only, and I just think, yeah, she doesn't know what she's I'm talking I'm going to take half <laughs> next time. Anyway, so, yeah, so I think it's, ha it's breaking that habit, and it's finding it something else to sort of, like, calm you down. Um, but you're okay, so we've got kind of so we've got GABA. You take a GABA tablet. You take an yep. L-theanine tablet. L -theanine. Take a make yourself a really nice lemon hot, balm hot drink with all yep. some lemon balm. But how about one of those nice mushroom coffees? Which yep. ones? Which ones calm you down? The Rishi coffee. Yeah, Rishi. As long as you're it's okay, not actually co it's not got caffeine in. No. Or you could have yeah, make yourself your own little yeah. cocktail like a Bailey's type thing, a milky, milky Rishi cocktail. So that's your little yep. action plan. Then lie on a spike mat. If that doesn't work, get into a bloody cold bath and balance your hormones yeah. that way via your skin. And, yeah, and trust me, like by the time you've done all that, over five days, your habit will yeah. have broken. I like those trust me, your habits don't take as long to break as, they, as, as you'd imagine. It won't take more than a week to just get out of that wine o'clock, wine o'clock. So this is a really nice one you can get in every supermarket. And it's got um, valerian and it's got lemon balm. So it's really calming. But what you could do if you don't want something hot, so I'll have this in the evening. But you could, when you're cooking, actually make it into, um, with lots of ice and sort of lemon. And you can make it as a really nice cold refreshing drink. If that's what your wine is doing, something, you know, people like a really cold white wine. If that's what Yeah, I mean, that's why I always cold. reach for kombucha as well. Yeah. It, does, it, it does give me a little bit of a lift, an energetic lift. I've just, I've just ran out because Matthew has drank mine. And I'm like, what are you doing? We're under lockdown. It's not essential. He's not allowed to do that. How do I explain to the Guardia that I need to go and get kombucha? This is going to be like five grand. You seriously, Fine. you've got to hide these things from the husbands.
and it doesn't mean anything to him. Okay, listen, if you are struggling with alcohol, DM me, because I know I've been there. It's flipping, it's a medicine, and it's a curse, and it's everything, honestly. Okie dokie, right, loose skin after losing weight, what can I do? Right, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll let you into a secret I've heard about. So, I know all about loose skin, because I've lost weight loads of times, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, but I think losing a massive amount of weight is is great but obviously you're left with the loose skin and that does take a bit of time to tighten up and i think constant i drink tons and tons and tons of collagen i put it in my coffee i put it in my smoothies i put i drink bone broth i just think adding as much collagen as you can can only help you it's really good for your gut it's great for your brain and it's got to be good for your skin marine collagen is great for your skin and uh, bovine collagen is great for your gut, but just get it in you. Planet Paleo do a really easy to use one. So do Hunter and Gatherer. It's literally flavorless and you can put it into anything. I'd do that. I would also definitely do weights, heavy weights. And do you know what? It doesn't take that long to do. I'll do a few. I mean, it depends where, where the loose skin is. But you can, you can just do like five reps of something and you're going to activate that muscle tissue and it's going to break and then it's going to expand. You're not going to get bigger. You're just going to get more toned. Also, another thing, don't quote me on this, but apparently Demi Moore spent 250 grand on those threads all over her body. You know the threads you put here? Oh my. 250 grand everywhere. Just saying. And I know a thread specialist who confirmed this. Okay, well, the weights are, the weights are free. <laughs> the weights are free, but I'm like, I want thread all over me. I don't like that. It's so, like being threaded up and zipped up like a dress. Oh, I think it's fabulous. And like walking around in a permanent herb leisure dress. Incredible. It's like, imagine if it went like you pulled it. You know, I'd love, if I look like Demi Moore, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I know. She's amazing. Right. She looks incredible because yeah. she went from really big to really small. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, th I think that, that could be like, because obviously you have that surgery, you know, apparently the South Americans are the best, the Brazilians are doing the bat wings. They're the oh. best in the world, FYI. Um, and the bingo wings, not bat wings. Sorry, I'm bat crazy. <laughs> but um, Get your but they, they're, the, they're the best in the world for doing that. But again, you have to cut that bit off. And... I mean, I, I did that after I had all my, um, my implants taken out. I had loads of loose skin, and the only thing they could do was just cut off the loose skin and stitch me back up again. But it, the opportunity, it is there, but definitely keep, try the collagen. Absolutely try the collagen, because it's free. You can make it with chicken carcass, you know? I mean, I've got I've just finished a chicken tonight, and I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in a bowl, put some apple cider vinegar in it, two liters of water, a carrot, and some celery, and I will just boil the life out of it and simmer it for 12, maybe 15 hours, and I will just eat that throughout the day over the next few days. Just every day I have bone broth. You like bone broth, Pippa, don't you? Yeah, I tend to. I, I make my own, but to be honest, because I get to it quite a lot in casseroles and things like that. So I also yeah. do buy it in from Piper's or, or um, Coon Farm as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't use the powder I mean, stuff because I don't really, I don't have anything in between meals or anything like that. But I, well, I use it in cooking. Yeah, I use it a lot in cooking. I mean, it's a, re it's a really good thing to have in if you're trying to sort of like change your diet, but you realize you're a little picker. Like I'm a picker, I was a picker. And you're always like grabbing for some crisps there, some nuts there, an apple there, whatever. You're, you know, you're constantly spiking your insulin. It's a really good thing to have on board, as well as like your coffee, as well as your mash of tea. It's nice to have some bone broth and you can whiz it up with some MCT oil as well. And it will fill you up without, without spiking your insulin as much. And it's just great for your skin, bloody yeah. hell. I mean, if anything, at least you'll, you know, yeah, so basically, it, and... in, we're talking, I think, exercise, muscle work for sure, um, collagen, um, essential fatty acids, really important. So make sure you're not cutting all the fats out of your diet, that you have good, 
fats in your diet as well. Um, and we talked about astaxanthin the other day as well, which is very good. Good answer. Yeah, I picked some up. I, I actually, I picked some up today from, the, there's a little German health store down here that's open. He's the sweetest guy ever. And I picked up some astaxanthin mm. just because I know I'm going to be in the sun so much. Uh, yes, you could take krill instead, but then that's, you know, for a different thing, really. I think if you're taking, really want astaxanthin, you need to take it on its own as a supplement. Yeah, ideally, um, ideally. I might start putting, giving the kids yeah. it as well. Actually. I mean, having said that, we have so much, so much, we have so much like red seafood. We have loads and loads of gamblers, you know? I mean, I, I always, always eat the legs and everything. I'm always eating that. Uh, maybe yeah, so you, you might keep getting it into your diet as well. And you know, it's pretty cheap. Go on, sorry. Let's do another question. Let's do another question. Right, I'm eating 500 calories um, three days a week. And she's only eating between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m., but she's not losing weight. So she's intermittent fasting three days a week, and she's really dropping the calories, yeah. 500 I mean, calories. 500 calories, that's not enough. Your body could well be going into starvation mo mode there and actually storing fat. I mean, you know, I've talked about going back to hunter-gatherer time, but um, as hunter-gatherers, remember, we are designed for, for starvation. So if we were starving we would actually you know we'd be storing fat to protect us so this could be putting you into starvation mode people think that if you just don't eat you're going to lose weight no i don't think you've actually you got haven't got enough calories and you need to be making sure you're eating the right things enough protein to boost the metabolism as well um i mean, I mean when i intermittent fast i take on a hell of a lot of calories yeah while i'm intermittent fasting because i have like this much oil like, I mean, I don't know, scoopfuls of the powder, loads of coffee, and, you know, I, I do not count calories whatsoever. I count chemicals. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm a woman, you know, I don't want to get hangry. I don't want to get snappy at the kids because I'm in calorie deficit. I always make sure I've got a ton of oil down me first thing in the morning that goes with my caffeine that sort of puts me into a better mood. It doesn't make me, you know, um, jittery. And I can start my day. And if I feel like it, I will have more fat in some bone broth if I've had too much co um, coffee, you know, and I will go and run on the treadmill in that fasted state. But I still have a lot, a lot, a lot of calories within me. And it's yeah. all come from good fat. Not silly little weird vegan bars that you pick up in Holland and Barrett that are all based on marketing that are going to carve you out, spike your insulin, and then drop it again at 11 o'clock in the, in the morning. So you're already searching yeah. out to buy more. Eat more. Like, you know, those protein balls and everything, just full of carbs. Yeah. They're just going to, and, and hidden sugars, because it's date sugar, therefore they don't have to say it's a real, yeah, so it's free of sugar. It's all marketing. Stick to oil, MCT oil in the morning if you yeah. can. And if it's tough on your tummy, just, just use the powder. The powder's fantastic. It's really, really good. And yeah. you can get it. And I got some on Amazon here because I normally just get it from Planet Organic, but they delivered it within a few days and I'm, I've got my, my lovely MCT powder. And I'd and also great. look at why you're feeling nauseous on uh, MCT oil. I mean, because when I started, I didn't realize I had bile issues and I, I had I couldn't tolerate bullet coffees. This is many years ago. So if you find that bullet coffee is making you feel nauseous or MCT is making you feel nauseous, you just generally have that nausea. There could be a bile issue. Um, so that's why you can't break down the MCT. So you really need to be looking at the root cause of why certain things are happening. Um, and bile, bile flows in parasympathetic mode. So when we're sort of relaxed, it's breathing and eat, eat bitter leaves and things like that. I'm seeing a lot of um, queries so about acid reflux. Can you acid explain reflux. about acid reflux? Yes, okay, so quite acid reflux is not too much acid. It's acid in the wrong place, so it's coming back up. Um, look at diet first. Look at foods. Look at getting out tomatoes, coffee, chocolate, sometimes wheat, dairy. So I would do a process elimination. It might just go. Your sugar as well. It might just go. If it doesn't, then we sort of need to look at, um, you know, support. So it might be that you do need hypochloric acid, um, but I would probably go in with things like digestive enzymes and bile support first, and then see whether you need. Um, sometimes people who are low- By the way, there's this company, I've, 
there's this company that I just got in touch with, like I do, because I really like their, um, it's, it's, a veg, it's vegetarian anyway, so everyone can have it. But it's called Bio Optimizers, and they have got um, a particular um, uh, acid reflux tablet called HCL, yeah. and they're offering me 10% off. So um, if anyone wants to have a look at that, they're giving us an offer. It's in one of my posts, actually. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in my discount yeah. code. But a really good com company, Tim Biohacker recommended it. He's done the due diligence on it. So he's done the hard yeah. work. But I've got, so I've got some of their digestive enzymes. I'm like you. I like animal-based products because I just find they work quicker. Yeah. But these are vegetarian, and I think some of them are vegan as well. So have a look. Yeah. It's called... Bio optimizers, and they're giving us ten percent off. I think. Yeah, I think you can try. It might out. even be. It might even be fifteen percent. So it's worth investing. You know, just to try um, but it first, out. First, I'd probably look at digestive enzymes and bile support first, and then see whether you need the HCL. And when you do take HCL, I would hydrochloric acid. Um, probably lunch and dinner, or just dinner, and take it in the middle of the meal. You definitely want to go in low and slow, and you take it in the middle of a meal. Okay, in the middle of a meal. Right, I didn't know that. I was just, yeah. me being me, just chuck them down at the end and go, oh, if shit. It's digestive, if it's digestive enzymes, you take that at the beginning or after two bites. But um, hydrochloric acid, then um, I would take that in the middle. Okay, fantastic. That's good to know. Hope everybody took that, those notes down. We've been told. Okay, what face cream and body creams do we use? What do you use? Oh, right. Well, we don't have that long and I bought my stash. I bought my stash. Oh, you've got a stash. Go. Okay. So this is my sun prep. It's got SPF. It's 25. That's the one I use in the winter. Right. So I like mainly organic. Um, so that's like a, a sun prep. That's like a serum and not a serum that goes on the top. Then I know you use this, you use this brand for fake tanning. Don't you, Tavinia? Well, I, mean, that I don't really. If it's like, middle of february well you don't I need not it been away you I, don't I, need yeah it. that's the one i use um, i have a bit of bro i have broken veins i have a bit of redness and, and pink in my cheeks so i use a probiotic range to sort of calm it down um this is called essie so i quite like that one Adrian. right so i use this for virtually everything this is marie reynolds you should speak to her she's really she's really nice actually she's fab she's got really nice little products They're right up your street Pippa. are they all this is a powder ones? it's a probiotic powder and you just okay. mix it with some water and you put it on your face my cousin's husband had a rash that the doctor couldn't get rid of you put it on there if you've got sunburn you put it on there if you've got rosacea you put it on there if you've got spots you put it on there and it, it really, it's Calm. great yeah. in a sauna and you can mix it with oils and turn it into a bit of a, into a bit of a rub. That nice. is my most natural one. There's another woman who I really, really like and I'm going to interview her. But anyway, she's invented this beautiful range called Decree. And she's put me onto this. She's, a, she's a, from a surgical background. She's also a biohacker. And I'm really enjoying using her treatments. This is Decree. And um, have a look at her stuff. She's, it, she really knows her shit, you know? And um, it's beautiful, beautiful. Because I mean, I, she, I don't really spend that much money on my face because I'm a big advocate of using the sun, even though we've been told for the past 30 years it's gonna kill you. But I do. But, and, I, and I always, I always like scrub my face with this baking soda, baking powder. Yeah, I'll put that into any sort of face wash. This is super strong. This just shows how tough my skin is. This is Neostrata. It's like an acid. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will put that and I will give my skin once a week a good, really good scrub. And people are asking about deodorant. The only deodorant I found that works for me and I, I don't stink is this. And I get it in the supermarket here in Spain. It's called Byline. It's organic. All oh. the other ones, it just doesn't really Yeah, some of them work. don't really work. They just don't work. You just stink. And it's just awful. So yeah. I've tried. I've spent thousands. I even got that crystal and everything. I mean, I'm in the gym all the, the time. The crystal Yeah. Oh, was it? This is my favourite foundation. This is called Byline really? Organic. I think you should be able to get it. I don't yeah. know. I mean... It smells okay, but I mean, it's bound to have chemicals in, but it is organic. Otherwise, they just don't work for me. Yeah. I do worry about... Well, if it's organic, it won't do. You know, and you just say... Um, makeup. 
makeup. I know, Davinia, you don't need to wear makeup, so, but some of us do need to wear makeup. And I, I love this. I've got this on now. I love this I've organic got brand. This is my favorite okay. foundation, and I have tried millions. And really? I love well, I'm currently little, using. I love this little palette. I'm currently using this one. It's called Delilah. Oh, I like the name. Delilah, and it's got underwear that goes with it. But to be honest, I don't have makeup on that often. No, like, you I'll don't do need it. To, it. Then, then, then it's, then it's off. And I don't have much to rather my skin. This one. Kaiser Vice. So this is um, a bronzer that I like. So, uh, yeah, well, we'll do a separate one all on. I love makeup, but I need it, so... Right, so anyway. I think we got through most of our questions. Uh, I think we'll probably have to do a number two as well. well. I think, don't you can't because say we've that. Not done any, we've not talked about CBD. We've not talked about swollen glands, perimenopause, candida. Yeah, we're going to have to do another one on Monday. So should we pick this up on Monday? Yeah, we'll carry on next Monday. Absolutely, we'll have to do a. I like the way you said we'll have to do a number two because I'm. You know, I talk about poo a lot with my clients, obviously. So I'm so doomed. I'm thinking, you know, a number two. So we'll have to do a number two, but. Yeah, I'd like to do number two. A follow up. Yes, ghee is very good for you, by the way. Absolutely yeah. superb stuff. Um, okay, and we need to talk about migraines and everything. But of course, if you yes. want, to, if you want to just DM us, no problem. We'll, we'll get back to you. Migraines will cover this. next week. This is repeated in my stories, yeah. and then it will be on our IGTV probably day after tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll carry all these questions on until next week. I promise we won't leave you out. Promise. No, of course not. We just got chatting again. All right, guys, have a lovely evening. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. Happy lockdown, y'all. Bye.